Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-1427. Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures SCP-1427 is to be contained on site at the Runyang Containment Operations Center, RCOC, operated by the Foundation in partnership with the Korean People's Army, KPA. Due to the artifact's effects, Foundation personnel are not to enter the DPRK approach to within 130 kilometers of the SCP-1427 exclusion zone or attempt to interact daily with the object itself. Foundation personnel are to provide remote support to on-site DPRK personnel. Under no circumstances are Foundation personnel to attempt to dissuade KPA containment staff from incorrect or unusual beliefs concerning the nature of their duties at the RCOC or the nature of their national government. As authoritarian, submissive personality traits provide conditional immunity to the signal broadcast by the artifact, Foundation personnel assigned to off-site monitoring must meet the following psychological testing criteria. Standardized Milgram Compliance Panel, greater than 71, IPIP Openness Panel, less than 39, RWA Authoritarian Submission Panel, greater than 17, and RWA Conventionality Panel, greater than 31. At present, only three national governments possess citizens with conditioning suitable for containment of SCP-1427. The Republic of Turkmenistan, the Republic of the Union of Myanmar, and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or DPRK for short. Of the three suitable containment areas, Political issues render North Korea the only government suitable for long-term containment. Accordingly, embedded Foundation affiliates in UN Security Council member states shall take no action tending to destabilize the DPRK, promote democratization, or permit the entry of psychologically unsuitable foreigners into the 600-meter red zone surrounding the Runyang complex. In the event of democratization, destabilization, or nuclear war, Foundation Intergovernmental Liaisons shall attempt to transfer the object to a designated secondary containment site. In the event that no secondary containment sites are available, the primary containment site and its surrounding environment are to be thermally sterilized using non-nuclear force, without regard to the risk of civilian casualties. Using presently available techniques, thermal sterilization of Pyongyang and surrounding environs bears a 91% chance of containment failure. Catastrophic containment failure is predicted to constitute an EK class event, resulting in the extinguishment of all human consciousness within approximately 215 days. Description SCP-1427 is a featureless 14 by 2 by 2 meter beryllium bronze steel. Though originally recovered in an inactive state, the artifact presently produces a directional electromagnetic pulse every 7 nanoseconds. Disrupting or jamming the pulse reduces but does not eliminate the artifact's primary effects. The device's electromagnetic effects are therefore theorized to be a carrier wave for, or side effect of, the device's primary function. Targets are selected randomly from the 20,736, 12 to the power of 4, nearest human subjects, ignoring those already exhibiting the effects of the pulse but including those who are immune. The device appears to have no effective maximum range. On several occasions, the device has exhibited the ability to make over-the-horizon broadcasts to otherwise occluded subjects by deflecting its signal off of the Earth's ionosphere. The artifact's means of detecting human consciousness and the causative mechanism underlying its effects are presently unknown. Upon receipt of the signal, subjects permanently experience increased suggestibility, severe abuela, and short-term memory loss. These effects are secondary to the artifact's primary effect, which is substantial reduction in prefrontal SQ2 signal. Due to information recovered from SCP- Foundation researchers presently believe that this reduced SQ2 signal corresponds to a significant reduction in 
or total destruction of the subject's subjective consciousness. Moderate authoritarian submissive personality traits appear to provide conditional immunity to the effects of the broadcast. Accordingly, since its activation, containment protocols have required placement in high population density areas subject to a totalitarian government. SCP-1427 was originally recovered from a Cistercian monastery in southeastern Algeria by Italian special forces in January of 1938. Laboratory notes from that period mention a rhodium carbide outer casing embossed with lettering in a known but poorly characterized Semitic alphabet. That outer casing is presumed to have been destroyed or lost by Italian researchers before the object's transfer to Leipzig in 1944. Between 1938 and 1944, the governments of Germany and Italy attempted to activate the artifact, both without success. In the immediate aftermath of World War II, the object was kept in East German custody. The East German government took no recorded action with respect to the artifact. In 1947, the East German government transferred SCP-1427 to Soviet control, who moved it to Kishtim, Chelyabinsk Oblast, USSR. In September of 1957, Soviet researchers intentionally activated SCP-1427. Though the artifact affected human targets in its immediate surroundings, then existing features of the Soviet government prevented the EK class and of human consciousness. After attempted nuclear sterilization of the affected area, the Soviet government contacted the Foundation through intergovernmental liaisons and the artifact was transferred to Foundation custody at Site 67, southwest of Cherniv, Ukraine. Since initial containment, the artifact has only been transferred once. In 1986, due to predicted instability in the Soviet government, the artifact was transferred to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Shortly thereafter, the Foundation commenced construction of the Runyang Containment Facility where the object has been stored since its completion in 1988. Addenda SCP-1427 ETR-3 Ethics Committee Dissent SCP-1427 On December 5, 1991, a nine-member panel of the SCP Foundation Ethics Committee decided, after a 2-4-3 plurality vote, to actively support the government of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, North Korea, in order to effectuate containment of SCP-1427. In summary, the deciding plurality found the following points in favor of limited stabilization and support. Instability and increasing political openness may soon render the USSR unsuitable for containment of SCP-1427. In the event of political instability in North Korea, the device may be safely transferred to the custody of the People's Republic of China or Indonesia. North Korea's closed borders limit the risk of exposing foreigners and, due to limited trade opportunities, Foundation affiliates and liaisons are better able to manipulate North Korean internal policy toward effective containment. Despite the clear benefits of the above, we dissent. Experimentation has demonstrated that SCP-1427 requires no more than 12 to the power of 4 psychologically suitable individuals in close proximity to the object in order to maintain seamless containment. With that in mind, Maintaining over 20 million individuals in a state of perpetual, involuntary totalitarian abjection is an unacceptable cost to impose on human subjects. While it is clear that in 1957, doing so was a necessary accession to certain facts on the ground, viz. Soviet failure to destroy the object outright, the Foundation has recruited 9,724 D-Class candidates since that date, or just under half of the population required to successfully contain the object. Though unclear in 1957, it is now scientifically demonstrated that totalitarian indoctrination may be recreated under laboratory conditions with relatively little sophisticated intervention by researchers. See Zimbardo P. on Obedience to Authority. Our failure to do so is an ethical failure of catastrophic proportions. The majority opinion on this review declined to authorize experimentation into artificial totalitarianism on the necessary scale, citing both practical and ethical concerns. 
They believe that it would be unacceptable to create a totalitarian society in miniature to prevent the end of all mankind. But in order to avoid creating an ethical disaster in miniature, we have authorized one writ large. Totalitarianism which selects individuals by a birthright lottery and not by any particular antisocial acts. As recent events in the USSR and elsewhere have demonstrated, totalitarian dictatorship is not a necessary feature of society. It is a phase of development which occurred and will someday pass, and that is not the Foundation's right, nor even its duty, to permanently arrest the development of the North Korean people for some greater good, no matter how great that good may be. The majority are demonstrably correct that taking appropriate action to contain SCP-1427 would involve extraordinary moral compromises by the Foundation, whereas mere abdication of our responsibilities shares this ethical burden with all humanity and the North Korean leadership. But when we signed our recruiting paperwork, we consented to bear that burden, to do what must be done for the greater good, no matter the cost. That we now impose this burden on the people of North Korea, rather than shouldering it ourselves, is an unacceptable abdication of our responsibilities as Foundation employees. For the foregoing reasons, we, the undersigned, dissent, reserving the right to appeal this decision to the O5 Council. SCP-1427 ACR-2 Summary Archaeological Report SCP-1427 Case Report, Tom and Rossett, Ossery, April 21st, 1993. File with SCP-1427. Principal Investigator, Usman Asmagan, PhD. Project Phase, IIA. Background. Following the disputed SCP-1427 Ethics Committee Report of May 12th, 1991, 05 authorized Phase 2 research towards decommissioning or permanently deactivating SCP-1427. As part of the Team B decommissioning initiative, 05 rescinded Standing Order 75128, which prohibited Foundation members from disturbing archaeological sites belonging to the Pleistocene Afro-Asiatic Culture Group PACG. Following the order's revocation, MTF Row 293 a Laharog responded, excavating the site where SCP-1427 was believed to originate, 71 kilometers south-southwest of the city of Taman Rasset, Algeria. Discussion Originally discovered by Aerial Radiographic Survey in 1967, the Taman Rasset Ossery was catalogued and monitored as a PACG archaeological anomaly and assigned low containment priority due to its minimal consensus risk. Upon arrival at the site in February of 1992, Row 293 found the site substantially undisturbed and the radiological hazard intact. Deep soil strata analysis discovered high levels of trinitite PD-107, U-233, U-235, Pu-239, and radioactive decay products consistent with an incomplete fission event roughly 70,000 years prior to the site's discovery. This failure of nuclear fission appears consistent with samples taken from the Kishtim containment area after the failed detonation of the Soviet failsafe device. The central site occupies a single blast crater of roughly 0.75 kilometers in diameter, centered on a rectangular depression indicating the existence of a subsurface structure. Disturbance of soil strata indicates that SCP-1427 was likely removed from this subsurface structure at some time prior to the year 1600 AD. In addition, the site appears to have been disturbed both before and after the removal of SCP-1427. Site containment appears to have successfully been maintained after 1967. Apart from SCP-1427, no intact artifacts were retrieved from the central area of the site. Like other PACG sites, intact artifacts, remains, and complete texts appear to have been systematically destroyed by later Sapien Sapiens populations, except where object size or durability made deconstruction impractical. The peripheral area occupies a single undisturbed geological stratum indicating continuous, low-intensity occupation between approximately 71,000 BC and 68,000 BC. 
Artifacts recovered from the site display features common to other PACG sites, including the following characteristics. Substantial radiological contamination, midden deposition, and osry contents indicating substantial infant mortality. Vandalism or iconoclasm by archaic sapiens sapiens. The use of beryllium bronze as a structural material, and artifacts bearing markings in PACG Semitic Rectilinear Alphabet B. Remains recovered from the site indicate cohabitation by Homo sapiens, Idaltu, and a second unidentified hominid species provisionally designated as Homo sapiens descensus. Relative to the hominid baseline, descensus remains exhibit gigantism and functional postaxial polydactyli with a median of six digits per limb. Presuming femoral proportions consistent with the human form, the subspecies median male was 7 foot 6 and the mean female height was 7 foot 2. Craniometry based on recovered fragments indicates a brain volume of roughly 520 cubic centimeters. Though populations of Idaltu increased throughout the period of cohabitation, descensus populations remain static. Above the radiation-bearing geological stratum, no members of the Descensus subspecies are found, though intermittent Idaltu occupation continues until approximately 63,000 BC. In approximately 61,000 BC, non-resident Idaltu populations appear to have engaged in a concerted effort to evacuate and destroy artifacts belonging to the PACG culture, with a special focus on removing and destroying Descensus remains. As few identifying artifacts related to later Idaltu population remain, the reasons for this period of late iconoclasm remain obscure. Conclusion Though the intended purpose of SCP-1427 remains obscure, its function appears to have been related to the subjugation of early Homo sapiens sapiens by Homo sapiens descensus. Resistance to nuclear attack appears to have been a high priority for PACG engineers. All remaining PACG artifacts appear to have been constructed for high resistance to neutron flux, and many have been recovered from what appear to be the sites of prehistoric nuclear attacks. As PACG artifacts appear to directly interfere with nuclear fission, it is the unanimous recommendation of Row 293 that decommissioning efforts focus on conventional arms or disassembly, and that recovery of the artifact sheath or other complete PACG texts be made a containment priority. Man, a lot of extremely in-depth scientific terminology in this one, huh? Anyway, thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Ubermit, The Reclusive Extrovert, James Saba, Arbiter Soul, Tyler Shan, Justin Day, Ophelia Gray, Der Nom, Curie Kuma, NJ Vujak, Jonathan Agosto, and Dr. Proctor. Thank you all so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevolgan. Thank you.